It's big, it's powerful, it might arguably be from another planet. That is a good way to think about this guy. It's the new Alienware M18. It is a massive gaming laptop from Dell's Alienware brand. We first saw it announced right around CES 2023, and it's already here on our testing bench. And I gotta tell you, so far, I am pretty blown away by the performance, uh, by all the top-end components here. And that is because this is one of the highest-end, most expensive, most specced out configurations of this you can buy. Besides an Intel 13th Gen Core i9 CPU, it's also got NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4090 GPU. This is the first laptop that I've tested with a 4090. I've only just started getting a couple with 4080 cards, so it's great to be able to jump right into the super high-end version. Uh, that's pretty much the fastest laptop graphics card that you can get right now. Besides that, it's got 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD in this particular configuration. Frankly, one terabyte seems a little thin for me. I would maybe invest in a little more storage space, but as is, this configuration is 3549, uh, very close to the most expensive, most uh, high-end config you can build with this particular system. Now, keep in mind that configurable laptops, especially gaming laptops, the prices and component options may shift a little bit over time, uh, and you could spend more, you could spend less. The least expensive configuration of this I have seen right now is $2,099, which is a lot less, but that's only got an NVIDIA 4060 graphics card. And frankly, if I was just in the market for a 4060 laptop, I would not buy something big and expensive like this. You can get similar components in a regular 15, 16, 17 inch gaming laptop for a lot less. Now this is not the first 18-inch gaming laptop of 2023. It's not even the first 18-inch gaming laptop I've tested and reviewed so far in 2023. That was the Razer Blade 18, which is very similar to this. The design of Razers tend to be a little more muted, a little more mainstream, although Alienware has really kind of toned down the alien head look and feel over the years, even though there's a giant alien head here and one over here and one on the back, but it still can pass for a very, you know, mainstream, doesn't have to look super gamery machine. Now that Razer Blade Blade 18, very similarly configured, but more expensive. It was actually $37.99, and that was only with a 4080 graphics card. So there's a way you could look at this and say the Alienware M18 is actually kind of a bargain. I don't know if I'd buy that argument, but you could make that argument. But keep in mind the prices and configuration options can shift over time, so these may not be the exact prices when you go look it up right now. One thing the Alienware version has that the Razer doesn't is this Cherry MX keyboard. It's a very clacky desktop style keyboard. The Razer just has, uh, you know, very flat regular laptop keys. So if you're a classic PC gamer and you like that big desktop keyboard feel with the real heavy travel and the clacking keys, uh, you're gonna like this a lot. I found it to be a little loud and distracting, but that's because I'm primarily a laptop person. I don't need that big, uh, you know, physical sensation of mashing on a uh, desktop keyboard. If you wanna hear what it sounds like, it's a little bit like this. Now the big star here is obviously the massive screen. I love the idea of an 18 inch gaming laptop. There were actually one or two, maybe about 10, 11, 12 years ago, never really caught on. Uh, one of them was actually an Alienware. Uh, this obviously miles and miles more advanced than that. There were two 18 inch screen options right now. There's a QHD screen, which is this, and it's got a 165 Hertz refresh rate. Seems very uh, standard to me. There's also an FHD version, so a lower resolution version, but with a crazy 480 hertz refresh rate. And you'd want that if you were doing, you know, very competitive Twitch-based gaming and you needed the fastest frame rates and fastest refresh time possible. But if you were doing that, then you don't really care about having, you know, uh, 4090 graphics cards. So you can crank up all the graphics options all the way. It does seem a little unusual to want that in a big 18-inch screen like this where you're really going for visual fidelity. That's kind of the big selling point at least to me. Now, of course, you're asking, how does it perform? Well, with that uh, 13th Gen Core i9 and the NVIDIA 4090, it performed really well. Uh, it's probably the fastest gaming laptop that we have tested. Of course, you can say that every year whenever the most powerful system of that year comes out. Uh, in our benchmark testing, it did great. In anecdotal testing, I fired up, uh, for example, Hogwarts Legacy. I had full resolution. I cranked everything up to ultra. I turned on the ray tracing effects, which uh, a lot of people say really kills performance in that game. And even with all that going, I was able to, you know, keep it above 120 frames per second almost all of the time. 
Now this is not the boldest, craziest looking gaming laptop I've ever seen. It does follow through with Alienware's design philosophy of the last couple of years. They call this overall look and feel legend. This is legend version 3.0. Uh, and you'll see there are a couple subtle changes if you're familiar with the brand over the last couple of years. One of my favorite gaming laptops of last year was the Alienware X15, which was a 15 inch version. Uh, it was kind of similar to this, but they had a matte white color option that I thought looked really sharp, uh, very mod looking, very kind of non-gamery, still kind of bold. Uh, now they've gone back to just having this sort of, you know, metallic dark gray. I don't think it's as cool as the matte white. Maybe they'll bring that back, but that's the only color option I'm seeing for this M18 right now. Uh, it's still fine. Obviously you have that uh, per key lighting and you can design your keyboard to light up any way you want. And there are highlight lights that you can light up on the alien head here and on the back and around the back panel. So there's a lot of customization you can do, but you are still stuck at least for right now with that one color option. Speaking of which, something that got a nice upgrade here is the Alienware Command Center. That's uh, the custom software that controls a lot of the features of the laptop. Uh, they've always had this. I've always found it to be a little clunky, a little non-intuitive, a little hard to use. The latest version, uh, which I'm using here for the first time, is actually much more intuitive. Uh, it gives you a very clear picture of what performance preset you're using. You can do like quiet, battery, performance, max, and that controls uh, some of the cooling and fan options because the fan can get really really loud while you're gaming, uh, and you can set it to click into one of those performance modes whenever you start a game automatically and just go back to balance mode when you leave a game, and that's a great way to minimize fan noise when you're not you know, in the middle of a game. I also found controlling the uh, lighting color options to be a little bit easier in the new version, and just the layout was cleaner. So if you have an Alienware and you have an older version of the Command Center software, make sure you update and get the latest version. Uh, I think it's a nice improvement. Now, of course, when you're gaming, the fans are gonna be cranking because this thing generates a good amount of heat. Inside, though, you've got uh, heat pipes, you've got vapor chambers, you've got really big fans, so it actually does a pretty good job of dissipating that heat. Unlike that 15-inch Alienware X15 that I really liked last year, uh, this actually stays pretty cool even when you're playing a game. On that 15-inch, it got incredibly hot. You know, you couldn't even touch it in some places when it was cranking on a game. Uh, here, the only heat-related issue I had is that uh, the vents, uh, send out the hot air from the sides like this. And if you are gaming with a mouse and I have my mouse right here, I had a lot of warm air blowing on my hand pretty consistently while I was in a game. One thing I do like about getting something that's kind of, I guess a desktop replacement like this is your gaming machine or even your work machine or your Photoshop and video editing machine because it can do all that stuff really well is that you get a closer to desktop level of ports and connections. This is not one of those laptops that just has, you know, one or two USB-C ports and that's it. Uh, you've got a bunch on the sides, you've got a big bunch in the back and you've got everything from USB-A and USB-C and obviously an ethernet port and a regular audio jack. So things that smaller laptops are starting to get rid of, you can still find on big systems like this. So listen, this is a crazy expensive laptop with a crazy expensive configuration. That said, it is less expensive uh, component for component than the Razer version we previously tested. Uh, but if neither one of these are your cup of tea, there are at least two or three other 18 inch gaming laptops coming later this year. I gotta say so far, as somebody who likes really small laptops, but you know, they're not free for gaming. I like a bigger screen for gaming, but I don't always wanna play on a big screen TV in the living room off a console or off a computer plugged into uh, the living room room TV. I love the option of having a bigger gaming screen like this. Uh, I hope we see a lot more 18 inch gaming laptops. And frankly, I hope we see a lot more 18 inch and really big screen laptops that are great for video editing and photo editing and just multimedia use. Uh, I think it's a great way to get the best of a desktop and a laptop all in one.